Hi everyone, I am Dalia Ibrahim and this is Dalia Case Collection. Today we will have a short case series of three children with uncommon types of skull fractures. Uh, so let's get started with the first case. This is a one-year-old boy who had an old history of trauma and now he came for follow-up. This is a 3D volume rendering bone window and as I said before, this is the best series you can examine the skull bones, the sutures and for uh, detection of uh, skull fractures. And actually it's um, uh, an important series to detect the or to differentiate the fractures from the sutures. Okay, and to detect different types of fractures like in this case. Here we have a right parietal a long and gapped skull fracture. Okay, so in this case, it's not just a facial fracture, but we do have a long and a gapped fracture. And when we examine this on the axial bone window, you can see and you can uh, identify here that we have a gap between the fracture ends of this parietal bone. Okay. When we examine the brain window, you can see that we have right frontal areas of encephalomalacia, which are likely uh, sequelae of all the cerebral contusions second to the, second to the uh, trauma. And uh, here you can see there is a small uh, bulge of the leptomeninges and the part of the small cerebral parenchyma. Uh, those are bulging through the defect of the uh, bone we have seen before. So when we have this combination of a gap the fracture, Okay, and uh, uh, the protrusion of the leptomeninges and the brain brain through this defect that actually describes what we call a uh, growing skull fracture. Growing skull fracture actually occurs in young children. Um, it occurs as a complication of a facial fracture. Usually, the facial fractures uh, heal, uh, heal and close um, completely, but in some cases, um, they don't heal. And actually, the movement of the CSF or the pulsation of the CSF low uh, induce the uh, pulse or protrusion of the leptomeninges uh, through the bone defects, through the fracture side, the bone defect, and leading to widening of this. A fracture size so instead it heals and completely closes it widens and further widens by the effect of the pulsation of the csf uh, leading with, with with the protrusion of the leptomeninges and sometimes that cerebral brain matter through the defect um, and sometimes that's a complaint of the mother she complained that uh, or she reports that the baby had a bulge at the site of the previous trauma and sometimes the the treatment of for those patients is surgical treatment by uh, by the insertion of the uh, or the placement of a titanium blade here to prevent further uh, protrusion of the leptomeninges and the uh, brain parenchyma or further widening of this uh, bone defect this is the first case uh, with uncommon type of uh, skull fracture what we call growing skull fracture uh, we have another case here Okay, this is a case here. This is a okay. Uh, this is a one-year-old boy who had a history of uh, recent trauma. Okay, and his mother is complaining of indentation. She, she says, I, I feel like indentation or like deformity at the site of trauma. Okay, and this is again the 3D volume rendering bone window. And we can easily identify that we have on the left parietal bone, we have like a depression or a, an indentation of the skull bone. It's not like like, like the, the, the well-known depressive fracture. Here it's like a, a bing bone, a bing bone indentation like. Here on the axial images, you can see that it's not a true fracture, but just like an indentation of the skull. As I always say, the skull, the, the bones of the young children are very malleable. And so the trauma might lead to some, uh, some, uh, some, some sort of trauma, uh, or like the, in this case, just indentation leading to what we call bing bong fracture. Okay. Uh, that uh, I always describe this as a very similar fracture to the uh, green stick fracture, which occurs in the um, in the radius or the ulna or the or, or in the uh, leg bones. Okay, when you when those uh, bones are malleable, as I said, trauma might lead to indent to, to bowing to uh, indentation of the bones, but not a true fracture in the bone. We examine this, so we can see this, okay, and see this is uh, there is an indentation. Uh, in the skull bones, but in the but with examination of the axial brain window, you can see, you cannot see any overlying hematoma or any underlying um, epidural, subdural, any brain injury in this case. So we just have this uh, type of injury, and this actually uh, those types of fractures, uh, bing bone fractures, have 
uh, many many uh, uh, treatments. It, it might have surgical treatment in severe cases. Okay, if the case is severe and it's compressing the underlying uh, brain, it might lead to uh, it might uh, need a surgical intervention with removal of this and placement of the, with titanium blade. And uh, in some mild cases, it might be left untreated, and uh, those children might have this uh, deformity or indentation for life. And in some cases, the they, uh, the clinician might use a vacuum um, uh, um, uh, um, mechanism to 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 uh, to correct this uh, indentation in the skull. Okay, so this is the second type or uh, uncommon type. It's also common in children, what we call a uh, bing-bong fracture. Uh, the third type here, which is very uncommon, and that's actually almost always seen in children, what we call diastatic skull fracture. Okay, here, that's uh, diastatic skull fracture. Okay, and in the diastatic skull fracture, we can see here this is a, a, a young uh, child with a history of recent trauma, and with this is a 3D uh, volume rendering bone window. You can see here there's a, a diastasis of the coronal suture on the side. Okay, and when you examine this in the uh, axial images, okay, you can see here, you can note there's, there's a suture on the opposite side, so the, the side of the suture here. Okay, but here it's widened, it's diastatic. So what, this is what we call diastatic skull fracture. And with the examination of the uh, brain window, you can see at the, at the side of the diastatic skull fracture, we have right frontal subgarial hematoma. That's why I always uh, say you have to check all the layers of the brain from outside to inside the scalp, the skull, the duran meninges, the brain, the ventricles. Finally, have a look about um, and exclude the cerebral edema and uh, brain herniations. And here we have um, uh, left frontal uh, subgarial hematoma and left uh, frontal uh, small epidural hematoma. Okay, and the rest of the um, of the brain appears unremarkable. So this is the third type and the last type of uh, the different uh, skull structures uncommon. Three uncommon types of pediatric skull fractures, which are the growing skull fractures, which are uh, the growing skull fracture and uh, the diastatic fracture and the bing-bong fracture. Thank you very much and see you in the next lecture.